in the first chapter of the book of Colossians. First chapter of the book of Colossians. Beginning with the 12th verse, giving thanks unto the Father who hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. By him all things are held together. And basically that's what I want to say a word about. The God who holds us together. The God who holds us together. The book of Colossians comes to grip with the central theme of the Bible, and that is, Lord, make us one. The final prayer of the Lord in 17th chapter of the book of John, I pray that they will be one. Oneness of humanity was lost in the Garden of Eden when sin came in and split asunder the perfect harmony God had created. And with sin came division, brokenness, and darkness. And this particular book, the book of Colossians, is dealing with the problem of schisms. Because the enemy was seeking to destroy the power of the church of God. What Paul is here dealing with was analogous to what we see in the health care debate in America today. Some got this position, some got that position, and a lot of the positions are not really positions, they're just designed to disturb things. So it was in this particular day, Paul writes to the church of Colossa, one of his more philosophical treatises. Word philosophical means he's dealing with the great issues of the faith. He's very grateful that the church has been faithful and he speaks about the hope that's laid up for the saints of God in heaven and he speaks about God having delivered us out of darkness into the marvelous light. And he speaks about the fact that we have the assurance of all God has done because Jesus is the firstborn of all creatures, risen from the dead. And then he gives that marvelous statement, for by him all things were created. 
that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, whether it be New Shiloh or New Psalmist or whatever church, God is in charge. All things were created by him and for him. And here's the text. And he is before all things. And by him all things are held together. 107 years. Can you imagine people stand together that long if God was not in their midst? All of the problems we bring to the table and with all of our humaneness and all of the idiosyncrasies when God gets in our lives, he breaks down the barriers, he pulls down the problems, he changes situations so that we can all sit on the same pew and say amen. And it is God who keeps us together because he is before all things. All things. This whole Bible is a revelation of the fact that he is before all things. I'm getting ready to go to Egypt, as you know. And one of the reasons I want to go to Egypt, been there before, but I have not uh, gone up and down the valley of the Nile. I want to go see the temples. I want to go see some of the great shrines of ancient years. Because uh, Egypt is, in many respects, a strong country that has to do with biblical development. You do recall that Moses got his basic education down in Egypt. You do recall that uh, the Hebrew children were in Egypt for 400 years. You do recall that when they came out of Egypt, they uh, had a sense of a monotheistic God. You should know that that was already prevalent in Egypt, according to scholars. You do know that much of the influence in Judaism is, is, is found right there in Egypt. And while we do not get the full sense of Egypt being an African country, let me remind you that the Nubians of Egypt Ah, represent some of the greatest leaders and some of the greatest builders of the monuments that are over there. So I want to go and see it for myself because before we got here, God was already working. And then I listened to Pastor this morning as he was in a way dealing with before the things God did that we could have church today. God did raise up Abraham and Sarah and caused them to lay a foundation of faith so that I can preach the gospel here this morning. God did eventually raise up Moses and caused him to be a liberator to bring the children out of Egypt. And through Moses, we have the book of the law. Through Moses, we have a whole family of priests and Levites and uh, prophets and sages because God was laying a foundation for the church of God. And before Jesus came, I would remind you that he didn't come for no vacation. He came because I've just read it in your hearing. All of us were filled with darkness, with darkness. Our lives have been swallowed in darkness. What does it mean when it says we were in darkness? It means that without God in your life, you don't have direction. Without God in your life, you don't have a sense of what's right and wrong. Without God in your life, you are prone to sin, hell, and death. And Jesus is the only one who came along and pulled the dark covers off our lives and made it possible for us to see the invisible things of God. You couldn't know who God is if Jesus hadn't taken on flesh that we might know who he is. And so all of this came before, 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 before Jesus really got here. He came 
to wipe away our darkness. He came to create a fellowship where we might be one. That's why he went among the least of these to show that no one is left out of the kingdom of God. It does not matter whether you are educated or not. It does not matter whether you have social standing or not. Every person is a child of God and everyone has been created by God and everyone has worth in the sight of God. And so here comes Paul writing a letter to the Colossians coming down against the people who are trying to destroy the church by saying one that Jesus by himself cannot be a savior because they say how can one man down a cross and be God all by himself and so when you read this first chapter of the book of Colossians you will find one little word that keeps popping up all the time A-L-L ah, God is in Jesus he's the fullness of all wisdom all righteousness he is all that we need in other words in the church you don't need to run here there and yonder to try to find what you already got if you need wisdom it's already in the word of God if you need spiritual power it's already available if you need light there is no light brighter than the light of Jesus Christ our Lord all revelation is available to him but here come the people said no if you're going to have real salvation you got to go back and follow the law of Moses you got to eat kosher food and do this and Paul comes along and said you don't understand that in Jesus we have the fullness of the Godhead bodily oh, glory to God and I'll come today to look back over 107 years and see how the Lord has brought us first of all didn't have much money 107 years ago but we did have faith in God didn't have much in the way of material possession but we did know the Lord would make a way somehow step by step out of the southern background we came here believing that the church was the body of Christ and we believed that where two or three gather together in the name of the Lord he would be right there with them step by step we didn't have no air conditioned building like today but we didn't come to be in an air conditioned building we came to praise the Lord we were working in the mills down at Sparrow's Point we were working in white folk kitchens we didn't have what you think we had but step by step when we got in church we had so much joy we praised the Lord because we knew that there was life in Jesus and here comes the apostle Paul saying the same thing he says in Christ we have redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of our sin one of the things that bothers me today is people don't seem to realize that the church is not about religious society the church is about the fact that I was dead in my sins I was on my way to hell I didn't have no one to go my bond but Jesus stooped down to where I was he picked me up he gave me joy and therefore when I come to church or when I'm at home I got to praise him because I'm no longer under the curse of sin I live under the power of the almighty and so brothers and sisters and he is before all things before all things before you got here a church was here waiting on you before you got here a gospel was here waiting on you before you got here a choir was ready to sing and sometimes we come and act like we don't have anything to thank God for I want you to think again do you realize God has been preparing for you God has been making a way for you God has been setting the table before you you are not lucky you just bless. before him and so I'm going to Egypt because I want to see what happened before and then the Israel and other places because I am so glad that our God is a God who not only works in Shiloh but he works everywhere 
When I come to church and see you from this pulpit, some from one corner of Baltimore, some from another, some from a situation of health problems, another from a situation of cancer in your body, another from a situation of not having a job, but through it all you coming because you know the Lord will make a way somehow and you get in here and the Holy Ghost comes and roll your burdens away for I know what you like sister caution you up jumping and praising the Lord because our God works in a mysterious way his wonders to perform don't ask me to explain how he does it but he does it he can bless you even if you ain't got nothing he can give you joy even if you don't have anything he's before all things all things all things and has delivered us from darkness. I still see vestiges of the darkness in the debate going on about the health problems here. I think Mr. Jimmy Carter had it right. He talks about the fringe element that seeks to bring in the venomous power of racism in order to stir up the demons of the past. But when I think about how the Lord has brought us through a civil rights movement, when I think about how the Lord has walked with Dr. King and other civil rights movement, I am like Dr. Carter said this morning when he preached I'm not going to go to sleep on what God has done I can look back and see what he did yesterday and if he did it yes guess what he can do it one more time if the Lord brought us out yesterday he can do it one more time and so when I see all the hell going on I remember that Jesus still got the whole world in his hands he's before all things And since he's before all things, he knows how to give us our assignment right now. All things. Which means he knows what he wants Shiloh to do. We seem to have taken the message of doing out of Christianity. And made it something of a ceremonial faith. But brother, when the Lord been good to you. You want to do something. When the Lord picks you up, you want to help somebody. When the Lord opens your blinded eyes, you want to be a sight to somebody. I heard the Lord say, you are my ambassadors. New Shiloh, when we look back and see how the Lord has blessed us, my God, I've been here 44 years and look around and I know something about some of your lives and I think about how the Lord has taken this little cosmos of people right here and kept us strong, given us health and strength, given us a house to live in, put some money in our pocket, given us some joy. Somebody said, we lucky, no, we not. The Lord got his hands on us. I want to tell you brothers and sisters when you see what God is doing then you become obligated to tell somebody else in the world that God can do the same thing for them Jesus said you are my ambassadors oh you wonderful deacons don't you know you got a great opportunity to bring transformation to this church don't you know God's been good to you to let you be an ambassador in the house of God don't you know the little money we give is nothing compared to what God has done for us don't you know God can put you on your back and every dime you got will be lost in a few days and some of you sit around wondering is the church asking too much I want to remind you something brother if the Lord doesn't take care of you everything you got to be gone in the twinkling of an eye you better thank God that you woke up this morning in your right mind thank God that the Lord God has been good to you. Thank God you got a car to ride in. Thank God you got somebody to say good morning to. Hallelujah. All oh, glory to God. Soon and very soon we all got to leave here and only what we do for Christ will last. Glory to God. I'm so glad today to tell you your joy is in serving the Lord. By God if the Lord's been good to you you don't mind singing his praises. If the Lord's been good 
to you. You don't mind dropping down on your knees and praying a prayer of thanksgiving. If the Lord's been good to you, you don't mind telling the devil, get behind me, Satan. You don't know what I know that the Lord's been good to me. Hallelujah. Because all things are held by the power of God. All things. All things. All things. All things. That's why that brick didn't kill you. God got you. That's why that disease didn't take you away. God got you. That's why those situations that should have knocked you out didn't get you. God got you. Because all things. All things. Not something, all things. Maybe I better read it again because you didn't hear it. Ah, by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Oh, glory to God, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers or things were created by him, all for him. And he is before all things. And by him he holds it all together. And when you get on down to the end of this chapter, after Paul said, I go everywhere preaching to every man, trying to make everyone know who the hope of glory is. I suffer trying to get every man to realize that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Since he is everything, ah, glory to God. Let me just jump over to what Jude said. And now unto him. I don't know what you do when you come to church, but it's all about Jesus. Unto him, unto him who is able. I'm glory to God. Maybe you come to hear the preacher but I come to praise the Lord unto him who woke me up this morning and started me on my way unto him who is the joy of my salvation unto him who snatched me from the jaws of hell put some joy in my heart gave me some glory unto him who has let me preach in this church for 44 years and ain't got tired yet unto him who's able to do anything but fail. Do you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about Mary's baby, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning sun. Unto him, good God almighty, you can walk around here like you're a big shot all you want to, but I'm not coming to worship him. I'm coming to worship the one who died on Calvary, was buried in a tomb, but oh, one Sunday morning, he got up from the grave. Do you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's worthy. I say he's worthy. He's worthy. Hey. Hey. He's worthy. And he holds all things together. Hallelujah. 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 Has the devil ever got a hold of you and you was trying to get away from the Lord but the Lord just pulled you on back? Has the enemy almost had you but the Lord drove you back on the end? Has the Lord ever done it for you? He will take care of you. Have I got a witness? I said, have I got a witness? I said, have I got a witness? In Eden, the devil divided us. At Calvary, God got us back together. In Eden, the devil almost destroyed us. At Calvary, the Lord washed us with his blood. In the book of Revelation, we're going to all get together the final time. No more sin, no more division, no more hell, no more big shot. Every day going to be Sunday and Sabbath will have no end. By and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God going to gather home. We're going to tell the story how we overcome. We shall understand it better by and by. You think you have it a good time right now. You just wait till our feet strike Zion. When I see Jesus, yes. When I behold his face, yes. When I see the one who died for me, yes. Is he all right, church? Can you say yes, Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
text says he done created things visible and invisible. I'd like to know what those invisible things are. Got to wait till I get the glory to find out. God got a whole lot of stuff we ain't seen. But I've seen enough to praise him. Have you seen enough to praise him? Is he all right? I say, is he all right? I say, is he all right? Bye. We will tell We will understand it Trials dark on every hand And we cannot understand all the way our God will lead us to the blessed promised land but he'll guide us with his eye and we follow till we die we will understand it oh by All we will tell the story and we will understand it. Say it again. Oh, I'm singing by. 